interested in the front row. So, so I'll call the uh, May 8th Village Board meeting to order. Um, I would ask the uh, clerk to call the roll, please. Okay, Trustee Bingham. Present. Trustee Duncan. Trustee Grumman. Here. Trustee Martinson. Here. Trustee Mitchell. Present. And Trustee Saylor. Here. Uh, Trustee Duncan should be coming because he didn't call me to ask for an excusal, so. Okay, um, I would ask everybody to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. After which I'd ask you to remain standing for a moment of silence in honor of all of our fallen war dead that uh, uh, preserved our peace so we can gather in meeting tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Okay, the chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the previous board meeting. So moved. Moved by Trustee Mitchell. Second? Second. Second by Trustee Martinson. Anybody wishing to speak? Hearing no request, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the April 17th, 2018 organizational meeting. So moved. Motion by Trustee Martinson, second? Second. Second by Trustee Grundon. Any discussion? Hearing no request to speak, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. I will briefly explain public comments. Uh, they are generally, well not generally, always reserved to items on the agenda. But um, if they are not on the agenda, I will give you a chance to briefly mention them. And those will be referred to the proper committee for basically processing the, the complaint, whatever it is. Um, we have... A couple possibles and a couple S's. Yes, is there anybody want to, if you have a, uh, uh, want to speak on a uh, agenda item, would it be okay if you waited until that came up, if the uh, chair would call you then, or if you want to speak now, you can speak now. So, Pat, why don't you go ahead with your concerns? Okay, my name is Pat Tyler. I am a village resident, and I have been awakened many a morning, sometimes at night, with the air quality from the recycling center for Domtok. Now, Joe informed me that's in the Seneca side of the river. However, DNR isn't. And I called the air quality engineer, her name is Tanya, in Wausau, voiced my concerns and complaints and she has given me a phone number and has asked village residents to call and complain if they have any problem with it at all. You know, the smell is enough to gag and make it. So I just, yesterday morning, got really bad and I called it in and they responded in kind. So if you want that phone number, I have it. Um, and it probably would be a good idea to just put it on file. If, if you could give it to the clerk, that would probably be the best way to get it. Yes. My other second problem is the semis on Port Road. It's ridiculous. There's big signs posted regarding trucks and they ignore it. And I have followed them from my house all the way to the stop sign on Seneca Road, and it's at least daily. Okay. Um, Chairman Martinson, would you address that at your next committee meeting? I certainly will. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. want to give Luana a call and 
she'll let you know when the meeting will announce that meeting later on tonight too. So okay. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Sandy? Well, I just have a question and a comment. Um, I don't believe we've had a humane officer since Marshall Beeler, am I correct? Humane officer? Correct. The, the police department takes care of everything that the humane officer used to? Uh, I, I think Marshall was like the noxious weed commissioner. Since I've been here in 1978, I don't remember us ever having an official. Uh, humane officer? Correct. Because we, uh, we used to take care of the stray dogs and cats, and I believe they, uh, they now, you, you still take them up to South Wood County Main Society? Yes, sir. And if there's a bite or other incident involving the animal involved, we contact the County Humane Officer. The, the County Humane Society or the Society Officer uh, takes care of, you know, the, the chief's uh, Okay, then just a comment. Um, I'm wondering if it would be cost effective and smart to have an ordinance officer. It hasn't been talked about, but um, I know Rapids has installed one not too long ago, a retired county deputy, and uh, the people are meeting with a lot of, uh, they like it. Things are happening a lot quicker because mm -hmm. officers are on the usual, I use that term, police call, you know, and then an animal complaint or a zoning complaint, you know, it kind of takes away from that. Um, I could address that with the chairman of the planning and property committee, and if he deems it feasible, then he'll put it on his agenda. Okay, thank you. Mr. Duncan, sir. Sorry, I was in the clear hallway. Okay, and then Mr. Allness, you said yes, and your compadres from the east side of the village said possibly. So, do you want to speak now, or do you want to I'll wait until we tell short term ordinance? And we'll see what happens. All righty. Okay, uh, under President's report, I really don't have anything, uh, but Mr. Apps does have a uh, rather important commitment tonight. And, Something to do with his wife's birthday or something to do with that? First of all, if there's not object, no objection, under new business 10A, motion to approve legal service agreement between the village of Port Edwards and Nash Law Group attorneys at law for of counsel to the Police and Fire Commission. Um, I would like to turn that after we get a motion and second to approve for Nick to explain it so he can be on his way. Any objection? Hearing none, I personally will make the motion to approve the legal service agreement between the village of Port Edwards and the Nash Law Group, attorneys at law. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Trustee Gundon. Discussion. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And I also appreciate the trustee's consideration of my circumstances tonight. You quite. Uh, more or less. So, uh, anyway, regarding the uh, Regarding the cert legal services agreement with uh, Nash Law Group, the, this uh, relates to the Police and Fire Commission. Um, it's necessary, uh, it's been discussed in a couple of different uh, forums uh, before now, but it bears repeating the Police and Fire Commission needs its own legal counsel. Uh, the village's uh, counsel cannot represent the Police and Fire Commission. Uh, by statute, the entire purpose of the Police and Fire Commission is to be independent so that uh, there can be no political influence on any disciplinary uh, excuse me any disciplinary actions or any review of uh, conduct of police or fire personnel uh, so in order to keep that separation there has to be separate counsel while the village still pays that counsel Everything else remains separate. Um, the only contact would be through uh, the administrator, through myself, but when it comes to advising the police and fire commission, when it comes to uh, helping them uh, determine how to make decisions, when and whether to uh, initiate any disciplinary action, uh, anything that falls under their responsibilities by statute, the separate counsel in this case, uh, it will be attorney uh, Greg Jarabic from Nash Law Group that will be uh, that will be involved uh, that council 
gives them advice on that point. So it keeps total separation between uh, the trustees and uh, the police and fire commission because um, with the primary reason being it is entirely possible that the interests of the village may conflict with what the uh, police and fire commission is recommending. Uh, hopefully that would never be the case, but we, um, we can't take that chance. I certainly don't recommend that we take that chance. And uh, multiple uh, independent sources, including the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, recommends uh, proceeding in this manner. So uh, my understanding and my recommendation would be uh, that it would not be necessary to pay a retainer to uh, Nash Law Group, that it would just be on a case-by-case -case basis as needed. Um, ideally, that would be relatively rare circumstance and then just hourly uh, at the same rate that we charge the, uh, the Village of Port Edwards currently. So, um, I think that it's necessary. Uh, it's a necessary movement. It's certainly one that, if the since the village has already decided to have a police and fire commission, um, to make that choice without going this step as well uh, really doesn't make any sense and exposes the village to quite a bit of, of potential risk. I think. Okay. Thank you very much. Very well. And Mr. Jaravic, uh, my understanding is he's the current president of the Wisconsin, City of Wisconsin Rapids Police and Fire Commission. That's correct. As a citizen member of the Police and Fire Commission. So he has a personal experience with it as well as experience in municipal law as an attorney. Good. Any questions? Dana? I just a comment, just so everybody is aware, the way that the contract is drafted, it's not just Greg. The, any member of his firm that will be charging us $180 an hour, including any and all associates. What was that again? The firm charging. charges 180 It's not Greg. He's not specifically being authorized as the village representative on this commission. It's any member of his firm. That's correct. And the reason for that is uh, that is OB. Yes, that's, I mean, that's the way our, our uh, but I just wanted to make everybody aware because Greg is more of a senior attorney there, and this authorizes that you can have any associate up here to handle our work. Well, my expectation is that he will be doing, uh, if not 100%, uh, as close to that as uh, is his schedule allows, and that he and, uh, that he intends to do all the personal appearances and in-person advising of the police and fire commission. It's pretty much the same, if I remember right, when you and I met with him uh, to see if he had an interest in that position, that Correct. he would be here most of the time. But thank you very much. Any other discussion? Any trustees? Okay, hearing none. Um, anybody wish the motion be reread? It's pretty straightforward. No. Okay, all those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Epps, and give the board's regards to Mrs. Epps. <laughs> I'll be sure to do that. <laughs> See you Thank you. Um, Thursday nights at 8 o'clock on 985 Charter, so we'll be on there. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you. Sir. Just you pass bet. on to your wife to enjoy them now, because I understand that in a few years she'll not want to celebrate <laughs> <laughs> I think I might keep my mouth shut on that. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay, committee reports. Airport Commission. Trustee Martinson. Thank you. Um, the Airport Commission met on April 5th, and um, the airport manager's report stated that um, Sickler related that this month his focus was primarily on planning and development projects. Sickler also suggested purchasing a welcome mat that would be used at the steps of planes. An MPESB has offered to purchase the mat. Also, Sickler discussed the necessity for keeping commission equipment indoors. Motion um, was made by the Commissioner Hamilton, second by Commissioner Nystrom, and it was approved and motion was carried. Under old business, they reviewed and considered updates to mayor leases. Uh, they discussed business after hours event scheduled for May 24th of 2018, in which Heather Sayers from the Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce discussed the how role in hosting a business after hours. 
and new business. We discussed our groundbreaking, excuse me, which is going to be taking place for uh, May 10th at 1.30. And the commission discussed acquisition of necessities, including hard hats, shovels, shelters, speaker system, etc. cetera. Um, they also discussed direction on creating airport marketing, considering a co-op marketing opportunity with Sand Valley and Visit Wisconsin Rapids considering um, quote for an ice machine installation, considered quote for a terminal exterior lighting upgrades, and considered also options and scheduled for the state aid development projects. The apron, taxiway, lighting, corporate hangar area, um, and then the, the meeting was, um, the, um, the meeting did end then, it was adjourned at uh, 525. And that is a motion. Yeah. And I will make a motion to approve the minutes of the committee meeting. Second. Motion by Trustee Martinson, second by Trustee Duncan, approve the airport commission uh, minutes of their last meeting. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Circuit committee, Mr. Burge, Mr. Chairman Saylor. Uh, we are meeting on April 24th at 4. Um, Del Stewart gave us some updates on some stuff that he's working on with the loader. Uh, dis we discussed some of the road conditions in town, especially for bunker, and we talked about some upcoming projects and stuff. Um, another thing that we did was we reviewed all the splash pad survey results that were uh, gathered from the website and from the uh, voting, the, the day of voting. <clears throat> and then we went through, I handed out packets to everybody um, with all the information. Um, so I make, a, and then we discuss it, and then I, I, I make a motion to have the administrator conduct a cost analysis for a splash pad at Alexander Park. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Second by Trustee Mitchell. Uh, and we will have to authorize Mike to conduct a cost analysis for the splash pad at Alexander Park uh, so we can get the project moving along. Is there any discussion? Uh, the, I'd just like to say that the results of the splash pad, we had 230 total people that responded across the board, and 201 of them wanted it, and 29 did not. And then the consensus for the location was here at the YMCA, so that's why we're looking at that location. So. Any other discussion? I had stated a couple of times in meetings that I had some concerns to the feasibility of the Y remaining open, but considering certain recent events and donations to the Boys and Girls Club, I don't anticipate the uh, Y closing at Port Edwards any time in the near future. I met with Brett three months ago and was down there and uh, we just were chewing all about the whole thing. And he reassured me, and I know I've been reassured about other things in my life that didn't pan out. You know, it's kind of like when the baseball manager gives you a vote of confidence and you're, you're gone the next week. But uh, I agree with you that the recent donation of the Alexander family to the project up in Rapids um, pretty well solidifies that they will be here. Anybody else? Okay, uh, hearing no further motion, uh, request to speak. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Um, and then we kind of talked about the splash pad timeline and uh, Mr. Corman's gonna get in contact with MSA or the engineers and stuff to find out the timeline on that. I don't know if you've done that yet. Okay. Your status, Mike? Uh, talking to uh, engineering companies, I don't think it has to be MSA, is my understanding. Okay. It doesn't have to be? That's my understanding. I'll, I'll confirm that. Okay. Keep Chairman and Sailor up to date on all that. Thank you, sir. Then we approved and hired three uh, summer health workers. Two of them were coming back from last year, and then a new one. Um, we talked briefly about the garbage and recycling contract and the proposals for engineering services, which 
just kind of on a fact-finding mission and more of that we brought up at the next committee meeting. Um, and with that, I ask for a motion. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Motion to approve the uh, certain minutes. Second. Second. Second by Trustee Duncan. Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Uh, before we move on, I would like the record to show I want to thank Trustee Bingham for all his work that he did in getting the uh, uh, pre uh, chairman of CERC last year, getting the uh, splash pad moving along. And John, I want to thank you and Eric for uh, mainly your good work on that survey. I think yeah. that uh, gives us the background that we need from the citizenry. So good. Uh, Chairman Duncan, Pitt Committee. Uh, we met at 5 p.m. on uh, April 24th. Uh, no public comments, no comments from the chair. Uh, we did review the snow removal policy and uh, considered or evaluated the snow removal uh, and grass cutting ordinance. Um, it's been $30 for doing that for some time. Costs associated with undertaking that effort have gone up significantly since the last time we adjusted. So I would move to uh, approve or to uh, amend the ordinance for the snow uh, removal uh, from its current $30 to $60. I have a second. Second. Second by her motion by Chairman Duncan, second by Trustee Grundon to double the fee for the snow removal to $60. Uh, is there any discussion or anybody? Oh, I'm sorry, Ben, go ahead. Just a question. Uh, how many times are we running into uh, billing people? Just a general number. Any idea? Are we doing 20 of those a winter? Anybody have an idea? Over the course of the Oh, I'm sorry. Over the course of the winter. Um, as far as the billing is concerned for an initial uh, that I don't have a number on that's handled more on the village side I will say however we are writing in excess of one dozen tickets per winter okay. for second and subsequent offenses okay. probably about a dozen people per snowfall that do not do it so we have to go do it okay thank you okay any other discussion here again all those in favor signify by saying aye Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Then we follow that by a uh, lengthy discussion regarding the short-term rental ordinance. Um, and uh, it's previously been brought before the board. Um, I would move to approve the short-term rental ordinance as currently drafted. Second. Motion by Chairman Duncan, second by Trustee Grundon to approve the short term the short term rental ordinance as presented. Any discussion? Do my possible people want to say anything at this time? Does my yes person? No. Okay. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And that motion carries. Um, it took a while, but we got her done. I just have one, one question. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. What's the time? Well, I wanted to wait and see if it was going to be approved, but what's the timeline for it being enacted? This is the I didn't check the ordinance, or the notice ordinance, but it has to be published. Is there a three consecutive weeks before? And then it's like 30 days thereafter. Excuse me, may I approach you about 60 years? Uh, if you want to take the restroom. This is actually a statute I, I thought oh, I chose okay. Trustee Duncan. Okay. I get a for it. Thanks, Scott. Sure. Classic one notice. Okay. All right. Well, well obviously, one day after the publication. Yeah. So, well, we obviously have to comply with Wisconsin statutes. So, so Wisconsin statute 6150 will be the one we'll implement. So, 
I guess that'll be the uh, directive to the village administrator to publish pursuant to law, and then it will comply with Wisconsin law and will affect pursuant to Wisconsin law. So, they want. That Mike, you want to pass it back? We should give it to the clerk to make it official. Okay. I heard you lose things. That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Mr. Corman. Well, it wouldn't be for me. What? Yeah. Wouldn't be for me. There's a policy in my office. If you give me an original, it's at your peril. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chairman Duncan. Anything else, sir? Uh, yeah, we have a correspondence from uh, Great Northern uh, Timber Company uh, regarding uh, ordinance, uh, village ordinance 17.100 sub 3 regarding revision um, as required for the setback from the water line. That'll be on the agenda for the next month. I have not looked any further into it. I know Mr. Quinn sent me some information uh, that I haven't had a chance to look at, um, but I will. And then that will be on the agenda for the next month. Thank you, sir. Move approval of the minutes. Second. Second by, or motion by Chairman Duncan, second by Trustee Bingham. Approve the minutes of the pit committee. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Public safety, Chairman Martinson. Thank you. Um, the public safety committee met on May 2nd. And um, I first of all would like to um, thank the individuals that were there at the meeting that evening. And I also look forward to working with um, T.R. Grundon, Trustee Grundon, and Trustee Bingham, and also Chief Iverson and Chief Arn as we move forward. Um, during the meeting uh, that took place on the 2nd of May, there was um, a very, uh, I'd say, interested group of individuals who are concerned about um, some changes that we're going to be proposing tonight in our um, police department. And I just want to state once again that it is not our intention to have less coverage in Port Edwards. We do not expect to have anything um, less than what we have had. As a matter of fact, I think we will have more coverage. We will be covering um, from 6 a.m. until 1 a.m. The county takes over after 1 a.m. And um, we do want to have an individual officer in the school. It's very important for us to make sure that the students know that they have a representative there and that that person is there to help them. Um, Chief Iverson has expressed um, a concern about that. She has been approached, and we too feel that it's very important. We want to continue with that. So. Um, with that being said, um, I am going to make a motion to eliminate the unfilled fourth full-time police officer position within the Village Police Department pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 62.135 MA, leaving three full-time officers, among which is included the Chief of Police. No, we second. Second. Motion by Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Bingham to eliminate the unfilled fourth full-time police officer position within the Village Police Department pursuant to the statute as officially listed in the official agenda, leaving three full-time officers, among which is the included the Chief of Police. Discussion. So there's going to be an SRO, so I'm assuming Lon is still going to be, and that's pretty much a full-time spot, right? That's correct. So one that, day a week. that leaves Lon and Chief, well, that's only one day a week? Yes, one day a week. Two, I thought, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I understood that it was two. It was not. Two. Two days per week. Um, or is there a new contract or a new... It's basically, if it's one day a week, it's what I was when, when we used to run the Southern Swing and Lon after his four days off, his four day weekend, would come in on the Tuesday of week one and Thursday of week two. And I do believe it went up to two yes, sir. after that. So it is two days. Uh, it currently is. Per week, okay. Right. And you're changing the, con the agreement? 
or it's remaining two days? Uh, Chief asked me about agreement, and when uh, Mrs. Sullivan and I made the agreement the years back, it was just a handshake. Whenever we could get in there, we would be in there. Oh, I have a problem with that. Because the agreement is is that the first semester is paid by the district, and the second semester is paid by the village. That is correct. So they paid for two uh, two days per week last semester, and if we cut it to one day, then we're going to have to bring this, money back into this. Yeah. Understood, and Mr. Cronin talked to me about that. All right. Um, and also, this would go into effect with the policy change. Um, we're really getting off course here a little bit, but if this one day a week would be memorandum of understanding we're going to draw up, so it's official, I mean, in writing. And at that time, um, we can, if we can do two days, we'll put it in. But that's going to be. Uh, the chief's area with her committee to see if they can do it. Um, we had three full-timers uh, for quite a few years with four part-timers, and it worked just fine. So my question, um, my wife's a teacher, and teaching used to be, 30 years ago, it used to be just teaching. Mm -hmm. Now teachers don't teach. They got, they're in meetings, they're, they're, they spend more time out of the classroom than they do in, inside the classroom. So, I, so times have changed. So I guess my concern, I, I'm very concerned that we're gonna be cutting a four time position. I just wanna know the reasoning behind it minus the monetary reasoning behind it. Why are we, we can't keep part timers because they keep coming and going. So I guess I just, I, I didn't know about this uh, before I saw it on the agenda. So I'm just curious why the decision was made to do this. Eric, I, doing research on a 2000 census a village in the state of Wisconsin, I cannot find one village in the state of Wisconsin, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a quote, with four full-time officers. In fact, I found one village with three other than ours. And secondly, I found many villages with none who strictly rely on the county of comparable population. And those villages have bars, multiple bars, grocery stores, uh, all kinds, they have a main street. Now I'm not saying that's a negative about Port Edwards, but we don't. So it's a different policing emphasis. If, if I could find, if the chief could, if every village in the state or even 50% of them had four full-time officers, yeah, I'd be interested in it. But I can't find any. I've not found one village. And I think with scheduling, we can accomplish the Public Safety Committee and the Chief. And I looked to her and I've, I've told her, she has X amount of resources. How are you gonna make it work? And I think we can work together and make that happen. And in regard to part-time, my personal opinion is we approach part-time the wrong way. We get a young police cadet, graduate. Well, heck, what are they looking for? Full-time employment. Lon Radke's on the Nakusa part-time staff. That tells me something. So I think strategy-wise, Chief, and I think working together, um, I can't justify it financially in my mind that we add an expensive position with retirement and all these benefits that I don't believe we need based on what I see. So one of the things that I... <laughs> Okay, so the, the village crew has seven people that work for the village, and they work from seven to three, seven to four. Um, they have seven bodies there. And we could, I haven't, I haven't looked it up, but we can see maybe if the per capita justifies us having seven people work, um, and we just hired another one. So if it's- No, we didn't hire another one. We replaced the position of retirement, so we're not adding the staff anywhere. DPW is still down two seats from what it was at their yeah, right. 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 But if your leaves don't get picked up for that day, and it's got to wait another day, that's not that big of an issue. If you call and you can't get a hold of, because of staffing reasons, people have to take vacations, people, got, people get sick, people have families. If you don't call, or if you call and make a 911 call and they can't bring somebody or whatever because a loved one is hurt or there's something happening to the property, that's when people are gonna complain. So that's just, you know, that happens between when we're not on duty too. I, I think we have, we get back to three full-timers and four part-timers. 
we got to have the staff. It's an administrative thing. We're very slow in hiring part-timers, but that was because I myself made a suggestion that we put that on hold due to the fact that we were going to hire Mike, and I thought that took precedent. But um, uh, in fact, Chief and I had a talk recently, yesterday we met, and I told her, unless I'm told no by the board, really crank it up and rev it up, uh, getting those other two part-timers, and she's already got one that's interested. So we get the full staff, then it's going to be, uh, then, it's, then it's the administrators, the police administrators uh, part to use the resources as she sees fit and to get it going. But um, my old philosophy, and I know I'm an old timer, but uh, you, you don't do a good job with the numbers of police. It's how the police hours are managed. And you hit your high points and you know stuff like that. Also, the second thing, for years, we never had a problem with the Sheriff's Department covering. The only thing the Sheriff's over the years ever told me, you know, try and cover your, you know, your daytime and your evenings, and then the 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock on, they cover. And also, uh, we're not required for 5,000 people to even have a police department, and uh, you talk about tax dollars, we pay an awful lot to the county, and outside of getting our streets plowed once in a while on the state highways, and we're reimbursed for that, I think, um, we're not getting a whole lot of bang for our buck. Channel 9, uh, Compared us with Marathon City and Spencer, both have about a thousand people less than Port Edwards. Last I knew, Spencer had five or six taverns, uh, a grocery store, and two big agribusinesses and a couple others. Uh, Marathon City is like a big little town. They have numerous bars. They have a lot of businesses from the Marathon uh, Dairy. And they've also got a four-lane highway called Highway 29. I can see why they have seven full-time people. And then when I look out these windows and see a mill that used to be here, I think we really have to start watching our P's and Q's and how we spend our money, I really do. I totally support the Public Safety Committee moving forward on this. And it's not saying we can't bring it back when the need arises. I think the, I get the part where you're talking about part-timers and I get the concern of the turnover. I think that we maybe need to look at a much more strategic hiring of our part-timers going to um, other retired law enforcement officers. I've talked to a few that have said, yeah, that would be easy that, you know, to not have that full-time commitment and to be available for two to four days a month that it seems to me like, and having them come on, they're trained, they know what they're doing, they have the experience, we're not buying, you know, putting all that months into training, to me that would be more cost effective and yet even more cost effective than maintaining a full-time position with all the benefits, but yet not reducing any service. <coughs> Question. Yes. No. Call the question. Oh, I had one more comment. Okay. Sorry, I'll I'll withdraw. Oh, okay. All right. I realize some of the reasons why this decision was made, but I guess I hope that as a board and we go forward, that when we're making budget changes, that we do that during budget making time and we set our priorities and decide then how much needs to be allotted for the priorities for the village. I That's agree with you 100 percent, but last year was not a normal year. Well, I understand that, and I understand why it happened the way it did. I'm just commenting for future planning that I hope we Point will well do that. Thank you. OK, um, the clerk will read back the motion for me, please. Well, I forgot. Motion to eliminate the unfilled fourth full-time police officer position within the Village Police Department pursuant to Wisconsin Statute 62.13-5MA, leaving three full-time officers, among which is included the Chief of Police. Okay. Uh, 
There was a motion and a second. We've had discussion. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. It's uh, 42. Uh, Trustees Mitchell would support. Okay, Chairman Martinson. Um, I guess with that being said, um, I will make a motion to approve the minutes of the committee meeting. Second. Second. Motion by Chairman Martin, second by Trustee Begum to approve the minutes of the public safety meeting. Discussion? All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And Finance and Human Resource Committee. The Finance and Human Resource Committee met on April 26th um, at 5 o'clock. We had um, Fire Chief Art um, review the monthly report and audit for the Port Edwards Fire Department was conducted on April 19th to confirm compliance with the SPS 314 and State Statute 101.575. Six, all inclusive. Um, would you like to at all talk about that, Chief Fire? I know it's been some, some time since that since we had a complete audit. Yep, the last time we had a two percent audit was done in 1996. So going through the records was a monumental chore, but. Um, Mike Fehrenbach, the state representative, did a really nice job with us. Uh, he came in and did a lot of explaining of what he would like to see. Uh, all of our records were up to date. Um, he just gave us pointers on a little more paperwork that we need to do, or I need to do, and um, it went well. So I was very happy with the outcome. I read the letter from Mr. Fehrenbach, and he did get a mega job on it. Yep. And Eric Saylor, Tim Leverance, and Jake Konoski came down, and uh, they got some answers and questions that they had. So it was good. Thanks, sir. Okay. Um, I, first of all, I want to apologize. I was reading um, off the public safety committee meeting that took place on April 26th. We weren't done with that second part of that. Um, Am I correct? Okay. So can I back move back up to the public? Back safety? Up. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Chief Mark. Um, the new squad um, is going to be ready around the first week in May. And Chief Iverson, it's up and running? Yes, ma'am. Great. Everything's good? A few parts that we need yet, but they're things that we can do for for now though okay good thank you so much um our part-time um officer um is resigning april 1st or has resigned april 1st and we discussed the sro program status and proposed a memo of understanding implementation and with that being said oh, I'm yep. oh i'm sorry the MOU will be ready for next public safety meeting? Or? It was presented at the last one. As to what I had at that time. I thought that was just the form. Then. It was written. But we didn't approve it. Did no, we didn't. No. Yeah. So. It was, it was to be discussed further after. To, we'll take that back to the next yes. meeting. Yes. what was agreed with. So, um, so with that being said, I will make a motion to approve the minutes of the safety meeting. Both of them? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Second. Okay, a motion by Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Grundon to approve the minutes of the April, or the May 2nd and April 26th. April 26th and May 2nd. We're done with that? Yeah, May 2nd, we are so not just April 26th. It's just April 26th. Okay. <laughs> Keep an eye on me. I do. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we are down to unfinished business, correct? No. Finance and human resources. <laughs> we have to vote on this. 
so you're the one that got me messed up here. I got to blame somebody. You backed up to talk to Chief Arnold about the uh, audit. So, right, we're going to stay with FHR, right? We have to hold on We've got one of these, folks. <laughs> And a second on the table to approve the April. Read it back for me, Madam Clerk. Motion to approve the committee minutes of April 26, 2018, public safety. Motion and second was made. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I felt like we were opposed. All right, here we go. FHR. Thank you sure we're done with public safety? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. If it, uh, there's no objection, <laughs> Chief, if you wish to. Vacate, you can't work, hang around, it's up to you. Okay. The uh, Finance and Human Resources Committee met on May 3rd. Um, and Chair Martinson gave an update on the progress of the interview with the Ad Hoc Committee. And that Ad Hoc Committee was um, in charge of doing the interviews and completing the interviews, I should say, for the uh, opening position um, in our Village, which will be replaced by an individual um, that has, I guess, I, well, I want to say right now, that individual will. You just discussed it in FHR, right? Because of yeah. the new business. Yeah, that's right. Up. You're going to, okay, it was just discussed in FHR. Um, I think the ad hoc committee, which was made up of Sue Mitchell and um, John Bingham, thank them for helping me out. We did a, an all-day session interviews that went very well. Um, again, thank you so much for your input. I appreciate that. Uh, at this time, I'd like to make a motion to approve the payment of the bills. Second. Second. Motion by Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Duncan to approve payment of the bills. Discussion? Hearing no request, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And I'd also like to make a motion to approve the journal entries of the previous month. Second. Motion by Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Duncan to approve the journal entries of the previous month. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And lastly, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of the committee meeting. Second. Motion by Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Mitchell to approve the minutes of the committee meeting. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Uh, we are going to go. NB. Unfinished business. I have nothing. I don't think we have had any unfinished business. Under new business, we took care of 10A. Um, so we'll move on to 10B, uh, the motion about the replacement for on a village crew. And I will make a motion to appoint Kenneth Murray to heavy equipment operator labor one position condition on background check, physical, and drug and alcohol test. Second. Motion by Chairman Martinson, second by Trustee Bingham to appoint Kenneth Murray to the heavy equipment operator slash labor one position. Condition on background check, physical, and drug and alcohol tests. Discussion. Uh, how's the testing going, Michael? Things are progressing. Things are scheduled. Uh, some of the requirements have been met already. Um, and we're, some of those things still have, are scheduled but need to actually happen. Okay, uh, you will let us all know by email or how when it's done. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing no request, all those in favor of the appointment will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Um, we now go to report from our clerk treasurer. Okay, I'd like to ask for a motion to approve a temporary Class B beer license for the Court of Fire Department Athletic Association for one day only, June 15, 2018. So moved. Second. Motion by Trustee Duncan, second by Trustee Bingham to approve a temporary Class B beer license, Class B beer license for the Port Edwards Fire Department Athletic Association for June 15, 2018. Discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 
Okay, I'd also like to ask for a motion to approve an operator's license for Jason Morton of the Port Edwards Fire Department, valid through June 30th, 2019. Both. Second. Sorry, Sue. <laughs> I defer to the motion. Okay, motion by Trustee Duncan, second by Trustee Mitchell uh, to approve an operator's license for the Port Edwards Police Department for Jason Morton, valid through June 30th, 2019. Our discussion? Is it fire department or? Uh, did I hear police or fire? It's fire. 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 Okay, yeah. sorry. It's fire. Occupational hazard, if I mentioned police. But I see your bias, Mr. President. <laughs> I am wearing almost a red shirt. Fire call. Okay, discussion? Hearing no request, I got to move along before I get forgetful again. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And I'd like to ask for a motion to adopt resolution 2018-1, amending the 2018 adopted budget to decrease expenses in the public safety category of the general budget by $500 so that the village qualifies for the 2019 expenditure restraint payment. Move. Second. Motion by Trustee Duncan, second by Trustee Bingham to adopt resolution 2018-1, amending the 2018 2018 adopted budget to decrease the expense public safety category of the general budget by $500 so that the village qualifies for the 2019 expenditure restraint payment. Any discussion or, okay. Can you just explain what that is? Um, I'm just gonna ask if anybody needs an explanation. Yeah, I do. Okay, um, we're in the fall when we do budget preparation, we know what percentage we can't go over. You know, from the previous year expenses, and so we use that. We came so close to the expenses that the um, Department of Revenue carries it out more digits and they round up. So it put us 0.1% over. So it was a matter of less than $500. So they will let us do an amendment to the budget and then amend the expenditure restraint worksheet. So we will get the payment. So that $500 is just coming out of just whatever out of, does it come out of Patrick's pocket? Or? Yeah, I mean, Mike and I kind of looked at the budget comparison and decided like, to take it out of that category. But there's not a specific area, it just comes out of the general. Why well, will need to take it off of a line item? And that payment last year was 48000 48, and something. So by reducing 500 this year, we get, would likely get close to that next year. That's the, what used to be called revenue sharing from the state? No, well, that's separate. But we did it at the same time. Okay. And so is this, so what's the, what's the black, excuse me, reason for this uh, payment that the state gives? Just to make sure we keep our budget expenditures in line? Yep. Oh, good, because no one else pays to, attention to that. Yeah, incentive to keep it down. Yeah. And we did, I, 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 I agree with your, your frown. However, um, And then if, if just for those who don't understand, I'm being snide about it because I don't think, that for a group of people who keep saying that they believe in local government, I get tired of them telling us what local government is supposed to be. It's changed, that's all we can say. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the resolution will signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Okay, uh, correspondence. I do not have any. Anybody else have any? Trustee Martinson. Um, I did have uh, correspondence from Nikki Krause. She could not be at the meeting this evening, and I will, I just started, just got an email, so I will print that out and send it to you so that you have it for your records. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, okay, uh, committee calendar, and before I go through it, I would ask Chairman Duncan, um, on May 22nd, we're going to be talking about uh, adjusting the code to uh, dealing with uh, replacement and the absence of the village president. And Nick is going to be there because he's going to make a draft change to the ordinance. 
and he has a commitment that day at 5.30 on May 22nd, and he's wondering if we could move the meeting up to like 4.15, if that's possible. <laughs> For what meeting? Could it be in May? You said no, then um, I think so. <laughs> Can I um, put a I think so on that? I, I'm scheduled to be at Eau Claire at 9 30 and 10 30, and there's no there's no judge listed in my schedule, and that's sure. depending on the judge how long I'm going to be there. I think I should be back by two, so I should be able to do five or four fifteen. Okay. If it becomes a, an issue, I'll double check and I'll let you know tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, the May 9th to June 12th meetings of the Port Edwards Village Board will be on Tuesday, May 15th, the CERT Committee at 5 p.m. Um, Thursday, May 17th, there will be a Board of Review at 9 a.m. and that consists of the village president, the village clerk, and our citizen rep as our former clerk, uh, Karen Thiel. And then on Tuesday, May 22nd, the pit committee, um, we think will be at 4.15 p.m. Stay tuned if there's a change. On Thursday, May 24th, the public safety committee meeting will be at 5 p.m. And on Thursday, June 7th, Finance and Human Resource Committee will meet at 5 p.m. All of those meetings will be held at the Village Hall. On Tuesday, June 12th, the Port Edwards Village Board will meet at 7 p.m. again here at the Edwards Alexander Park Pavilion. Anybody, uh, Tierra, you're going to be absent for the public safety meeting on the 24th. And the 22nd pit committee, and also Sue on the 27th. The 22nd pit and 24th public safety. Will everybody be okay with those meetings? I will not be at the pit meeting. Okay, uh, I would ask for a volunteer to attend the pit meeting for us. We have a comment. What day? What day? That's uh, 22nd. That's at 4:15. Correct. And I will not be at the circuit meeting either. That well, same you're day. Going to, I'm gone. Yeah. Gone. Gone. <laughs> Okay, let me, let's, let's just finish pit here. Do I have a replacement to join the chairman and myself so we can have a meeting? Eric? Okay, Eric will fill in. And Sue is the only one gone for Cirque? I think so. At 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock, and we will have the chairman and uh, John and myself, so we're good there. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Public safety. Um, Luann, you'll be a go? Yes, sir. And Tierra is gone. And I'll be there. And who's our other one? John. John. So we're good on that one. Mm -hmm. All right. We won't need anybody there. So, Eric, if you could fill in on Tuesday, May 22nd for PIT 415. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. Sue? I just wanted to thank both chiefs for the bike rodeo that they did. But they did an excellent job that day. It was a nice day. A, well a couple calls from parents. And on my home phone that I actually heard ring for once, so I, I answered and they, uh, they seconded that. So it's gone quite a bit from what I had. In fact, I just want to share a story. I met a lady. Uh, she's now 52 years old, and she told me that uh, I was one of her first bike rodeo contestants back in May of 1978. So we had a nice chat about that, and uh, she is, of course, her kids are all grown and raised, and she's a grandmother, and you have nothing to make you so humble and feel so old so fast. We have a motion by Trustee Mitchell, second by Trustee Grundon to adjourn. We stand adjourned. Thank <laughs> you.